Hey y'all, it's Taylor Lauren here. Welcome back to my channel. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe and engage with me in the comments down below. In this video, I'm going to be giving y'all the tea on pregnancy, my pregnancy, the good, the bad, and the ugly, what I loved, what I hated, and what just kind of took me by surprise. I think a lot of women are nervous um, about being pregnant and labor and delivery myself included because you just don't know what to expect and your body is doing a lot of things for the first time um and pregnancy and labor and delivery is such a spectrum uh some people get morning sickness some people don't some people tear some people don't uh some people have a big milk supply some people don't like you just don't know what your body is gonna do uh so i've really been enjoying filming these pregnancy videos for y'all just to give you insight and kind of i think when you talk to other women who are pregnant um, and who have given birth and have kind of gone through already what you're getting prepared to go through even though no two pregnancies and labors are exactly the same it still helps just having perspective um, and hearing someone else's story and it kind of gives you a sense of relief um, and assurance like okay if this woman can do it so can I um, so I'm gonna stop rambling I'm just gonna go ahead and jump in with you guys I'm gonna start with the things that were unexpected and then I'll move on to the good things well actually we'll end the video on a good note I'll do unexpected what I hated and what I loved um, so again thank you guys for watching um, if you are enjoying the pregnancy content uh, comment down below I hope it is entertaining and that it is uh, educational and that it's helping you uh, so let's go ahead and get into the video y'all know I have a list um, so let's start with the unexpected, shall we? Okay, so the first thing that kind of like took me by surprise being pregnant was skin tags. Um, I got a lot of like skin tags. I still have one right here. It may stay. Um, a lot of like my moles and beauty marks got bigger, things like that. Um, so I've heard of like pregnancy acne and even discoloration I experienced some of that too but the skin tags I had never heard of that and uh, I don't know anyone else who uh, got skin tags when they're pregnant like everyone that I asked are like no that didn't happen to me um, and I think it's because like before I got pregnant and even still now my skin has always been like pretty elastic and when you're pregnant, you're basically producing double of everything. Like your um, skin cell turnover rate doubles, you're producing more blood, your temperature is higher. Like all of these things are kind of just like escalated and double. So I think that's what it was for me. Um, just like my skin cell turnover rate was so high that it was producing like extra balls of skin essentially on me. Um, so yeah. That was something that was really unexpected. Um, the trials of first semester tiredness and emotions. Like I knew, and I, you know, you hear, oh, you're so tired and you're so emotional, but y'all, that first trimester tiredness and just emotional roller coaster was very real for me. More so the tiredness than the emotional. And it's just like you're physically and mentally tired or at least it was for me like normally it's one or the other like you're just mentally tired but you can physically function or you're physically tired but you can mentally function like you need to like if you're like studying you're like you need to sit down while you study or you need to do something mundane that's a muscle memory so you don't have to think about it but that first semester tiredness is like it drains you mentally and physically and I like was not prepared and like you hear about these things but it still was like just so unexpected how tired I was like I feel like <laughs> there should be like built-in maternity leave like postpartum and during your first trimester because and looking back on it like I worked my entire first trimester and I looking back I don't know how I did it because I was so so tired um the third thing <laughs> that was unexpected that you hear happens but you're like uh i'm not really sure like as you get bigger like you literally cannot see your 
vagina. I thought maybe I would be able to kind of move my stomach around and like see, um, but no, I, I couldn't see it. I could still see my feet. I could still see my toes and everything, but I could not see my bag. And it got to the point where like at my prenatal appointments, you know, you have to pee in the cup, like anytime you go to the doctor. And that was so difficult. <laughs> because I couldn't see and I just kind of had to feel around. And I feel like once you start showing and once you get like big in your pregnancy, like peeing in a cup should be an Olympic sport. Um, and there should be a big reward for it because it was literally, literally one of the hardest things I have ever had to do physically. <laughs> um, so you hear about, you know, not being able to see your vagina and it being difficult and it just, it took me by surprise how like real and um, actually difficult that was. Um, the next thing is the urge to nest. Once I got to about like 30-ish weeks, just nesting and cleaning and organizing, as you guys can see, uh, it just really overcame me and I just didn't want to do anything else, which I guess is a good thing, but I literally couldn't think about doing anything else except for preparing for my baby girl and everything was just like, you know, they tell you like at that point, like you need to be like sitting down and like resting, but it's so hard because it's just like the emotion overtakes you and I'm, I'm already like pretty domestic and pretty nurturing. So I felt like for me, it was times 10, like all I could do, like I didn't want to work. I didn't want to do anything else. I just wanted to clean and organize and, and prepare for her and buy things for her and just put stuff together. Um, so that was, a, that was, a, that was a little more unexpected because it literally just kind of overtook my emotions and I didn't think that it was going to, I didn't think that the urge to nest was going to be that strong. Uh, but it definitely was. And the next thing that was unexpected was the discoloration of my skin. I have never really had any issues with hyperpigmentation or discoloration or anything like that. My skin has been pretty even and clear like my entire young adult, adult, late teen years. Um, and when I became pregnant, I was experiencing some discoloration and that was unexpected because that was something that I hadn't heard of either. And once I started doing more research on it, I did learn that um, like women who don't get stretch marks uh, experience some darkening and discoloration of their stomach after they give birth. And that did happen to me. I did not have any stretch marks, but my stomach is probably a shade or two darker now than the rest of my body. Also, um, I had like, or have like dark patches of like squiggly lines um, from like capillaries. Um, I guess like bursting with like the double amount of blood that I was producing when I was pregnant, but that's fading a little bit. Um, and then just, yes, just, you know, nipples and areolas getting darker, all that kind of stuff. That was just unexpected for me and something that I hadn't like heard of or thought about um, and another thing that kind of was unexpected for me is I was pretty much able to still fit all of my clothes during pregnancy and I just kind of had this idea that I was gonna blow up and get big and not be able to fit any of my clothes um, but I was still able to fit everything and that was kind of unexpected for me too I think that may just be like genetics and um, what size you were before you got pregnant. Uh, I was 110 pounds and a size two before I got pregnant. Uh, and I'm, I don't know how much I weigh now. I haven't weighed myself lately, but I'm almost three weeks postpartum. Uh, so yeah, I just thought that I was just gonna get really, really big and not be able to fit any of my clothes, but that wasn't the case for me. I was able to kind of wear all of my clothes for the duration of my pregnancy. Um, so yeah. And that is the final thing that I have for like the unexpected, you guys. And, oh wait, one more thing for unexpected, dental care. Um, I guess like my teeth got very sensitive, my gums, um, especially in the back, I still have all of my wisdom teeth, 
Uh, so my gums and my teeth got really sensitive uh, while I was pregnant. Uh, it doesn't happen anymore. It's bypassed since I've delivered. Uh, but I was just, there were some days where it was just so kind of like a chore to brush my teeth. And I had to be very careful because certain parts of my mouth were very sensitive. And it was never like my whole mouth. It was either just like kind of my left side or my right side or like my top teeth or my bottom teeth. It was always like a small portion of my mouth that was sensitive. Uh, I didn't really do anything for it. I didn't get like any special toothpaste or anything. I just kind of grimmed and bared it. Um, but yeah, that was something that was unexpected for me. Uh, I had never heard of that before. Um, I will say that, you know, once you become pregnant, your OB will tell you to get all, they recommend that you just, you know, get all of your other medical care done. Like, you know, your, your dental care and your eye care and all of that, go ahead and get that stuff out of the way. Uh, so you don't have to worry about like any procedures or checkups or anything during your pregnancy. Um, but yeah, the, the gum sensitivity, the, the teeth sensitivity was something that was unexpected uh, for me that I experienced. Now, moving on to the bad things. Uh, it was very difficult to just find care and deciding how you want to bring your baby into the world. Do you want a home birth? Do you want a hospital birth? Do you want a doula or not? Do you want a midwife or not? Um... Are you happy with your OB or are you going to switch? Thankfully, I was happy with my OB, but it was very difficult for us to find a doula. The doula that we did find, we love. Um, but just deciding what you want your prenatal care to look like and what you want your o what you want your labor and delivery to look like and finding kind of putting together your, your team, putting together your pregnancy and your birthing team can be a bit of a hassle. Um, and that was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. And in the beginning, it was, we, I would say by the time I was like 10, 10 weeks, we had everything together. It probably took me seven, it probably took me three weeks to kind of like get our birthing team village together. Um, but yeah, that was, that was one thing that was kind of like a hassle. And that was annoying and, and frustrating because there are a lot of options. And then it's really just about, in addition to qualifications, just finding people that mesh well with you and that are a good fit for you and your, you know, growing family. So that was something that was on the bad spectrum that was just kind of frustrating. Uh, the next thing, heartburn. I had so much heartburn. I was pregnant and luckily my baby girl came out with a head full of hair so it was worth it um but it's literally y'all it just feels like a swirling ball of fire just like right in the middle of your chest and I had never experienced anything like that before and majority of my heartburn would happen in the middle of the night when I was like comfortable and sleeping and it would just start up and wake me up and I would have to chug like two like yetis of water uh, to get it to subside so i hated having heartburn very annoying probably the the worst thing about my pregnancy and then the next thing was dry scalp and my it's it's gotten better but it's still very dry um again because your body is just producing so much like my scalp was so dry and my dandruff was so bad during my pregnancy um and before getting pregnant, I could go maybe like a week and a half, two weeks um, without washing my hair. Like I wash my hair like every week and a half, every two weeks. But when I got pregnant and I just started producing so much dandruff that my scalp would get really dry. In addition to my hair growing super fast, I would have to just wash my hair like once a week because it would just, it would get so bad and just nasty. Um, so that's something that was kind of annoying. Um, and then the last thing is the aches and pains as you get closer to labor. I would say like around 34 weeks, I was over it. I, my, the, my pregnancy went on for 39 weeks and two days. That's how far along I was when I delivered my daughter. And it's just real. It's so real. Like once you get to like 34, 35 weeks when you're getting down to the nitty gritty, those like probably last five weeks it's awful like 
bearable but awful and it's just the aches and the pains and the ligament stretching and the hips and the lower back pain and the hip pain and you know the weight of your belly and just trying to like get up <laughs> everything just is an ache and a pain um and that was very very annoying and just difficult to deal with um now Moving on to the good things, hair growth, um, you know, B12, the, the prenatals, that was great. The, the hair, skin, and nail side of being pregnant was great. Um, I'm not even getting SNS right now because it's a waste of money at this point because my nails are growing out so fast. Um, my hair is growing a lot. Um, I'm still on my prenatals. I'm pretty sure I gained maybe... I don't know, maybe like three, four inches during my pregnancy, who knows. Um, but that was great. That's that's a really, really great thing. Um, the growth, the hair, the hair, skin and nails, the glow, that's all great. Uh, the My belly growing, I really loved, I really enjoyed. Um, I took pictures every week, so it feels like you're not getting bigger, but once you look back and you, you see the documentation, that's great. Uh, feeling your kid move inside of you there's nothing like that feeling um, just knowing that you are producing life it's a very beautiful thing um, what else the the support and the care from others like if you have like a wonderful partner wonderful friends wonderful family wonderful care team like just the support and the love um, you know from your village is great no matter if you have like a big support team or a small support team it's not about the quantity it's about the quality of care and support that you're receiving and that was great during my pregnancy knowing that I always had someone to lean on whether it was my husband or my parents or my doula just knowing that there was always someone there for me um, another good thing that I loved was still being able to be active um, I still, you know, walked and, and stretched and everything by the grace of God. I wasn't put on bed rest or anything like that. So I really enjoyed being able to still, you know, be up and active and, and walk and stretch and, and drive and to do all of the things that I was doing before I got pregnant. Um, that was really great. So even if it's just walking, like some days I could only walk for like 15, 30 minutes, like around the neighborhood or whatever. Um, but every little bit counts because you're going to need that stamina. <laughs> Uh, for labor and delivery. So I was very grateful and very happy that I was able to still be active. That was definitely a plus um, for me and something that was on like the good part of my list. Um, and then the last thing was accessing pregnancy resources. There are so many resources for pregnant women, so many like free programs um, and all types of stuff. You just have to go looking for it. So I was very grateful of all of kind of the information that was available to me from like what my doula gave me to what my OB's office gave me to what I came across um, on my own uh, on the internet or just different uh, programs in my community that I came across. So there's definitely a lot out there for pregnant women, um, a lot of resources, a lot of educational resources um, and support groups. You just have to, you know, put in the effort to look for them. So you guys, that was the end of this video, the good, the bad, and the unexpected of my pregnancy. Um, I hope this was insightful. Uh, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Engage with me in the comments down below. And I will see y'all in the next video.